to two, two sweet wrestling podcasts. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday, February 23rd, and this is episode eight of the two sweet podcast. Yes, indeed. We're going to be talking about a few quick hit subjects before we get into the Elimination Chamber picks and predictions. This is the Elimination Chamber Prediction Podcast. And I'm very excited. Uh, first, we're going to get into a few, excuse me, a few house cleaning notes. Here today, we're going to be on YouTube and Podomatic. I will be listing the links on my Twitter page to, at 2 sweet Pod, at OMG Corey B. You can find my YouTube page. You just type in the bar OMG Corey B as well. Also, my T shirt store, tpublic.com slash user slash OMG Corey B. So let's get right on into this. I'm not going to have any more plugs. I want to get right on into it. First, we're going to start off with the quick hit news. First up, we're going to start with Brock Lesnar. Our report came out that Brock Lesnar wasn't on the ticket for this year's SummerSlam. The picture featured Ronda Rousey, AJ Styles, Braun Strowman, Sasha Banks, Roman Reigns, The Usos, and many more. But it did not feature Brock Lesnar. So it got many people talking that this could be a possible return for Brock Lesnar in the UFC. It could be a departure from WWE. And I'll be the first to tell you, I would welcome that on because I am really tired of the act of what we have going with Brock Lesnar. And, you know, obviously he's going to drop the title at WrestleMania. So I'm excited about that. And... Look, maybe one more feud after that, and then he can go on and do whatever he whatever he wants to do. So moving on, uh, the Louisiana Boxing and Wrestling Commission has banned blood and power drivers during WrestleMania 34 week. My home state, like, you know the meme where it's like a guy confused and hurt and under it, it says, oh no, baby, what is you doing? That's what I'm saying right now. Oh no, Louisiana, what is you doing? My home state, uh, as the report says, blood and power drivers are prohibited on all events in the state. Power drivers are banned due to a prior talent injury. Our promoters are required to have some kind of license to promote, but it was noted that Louisiana does allow, <clears throat> excuse me, existing promoters to loan licenses out. Look, I mean, we're kind of going overboard with this stuff. Maybe Vince McMahon got a hold to him on WrestleMania week, to which I'm just totally kidding about that. But uh, that's just a bit too much for me. Bad and blood and power drivers, come on. So moving on, TNA Impact. We got Austin Aries and Johnny Impact coming up. I'm excited about that. That should be a phenomenal matchup at TNA Crossroads. I'll tell you what, with, with TNA, they, they have, excuse me, with Impact Wrestling, I get into that habit all the time calling them TNA, but with Impact Wrestling, they have hit the ball out of the park with these pay-per-view names, uh, uh, with Crossroads and the, the uh, Re Redemption. That's what it is, Redemption. I'm looking forward to that too. But Johnny Impact versus Austin Aries, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's the first time matchup. I'm not sure. It's definitely a first time matchup for me. I've never seen the guys face off. So I'll be paying attention to that and I'll be looking forward to it. And finally, before we get into the WWE Elimination Chamber picks and predictions, right, we're going to go back to the reports of WWE. Cutting down the pay-per-views and, excuse me, co-branding the pay-per-views, excuse me, co-branding the pay-per-views and pretty much essentially cutting down the pay-per-views too. A report came out and they said the reason that they cut down on the pay-per-views was because they were basically spending a lot of money and not making that money back. 
the idea was to come back to 12 and go back to dual branded shows rather than go months without shows from SmackDown or Raw. As far as the talent pay goes for the top talent, the difference probably won't be significant. But here's the kicker, for non-top guys, if there are more people on the show, obviously, it's gonna cut down on the on the money that they get on the show. Mid-level guys who would have been on pay-per-views eight to 10 times a year due to the brand split, now may not be on pay-per-views at all. Or if there are fewer shows, the difference will be extremely significant. So that's what I was talking about if I'm not mistaken, that was either last week or the week before. Pretty sure it was last week. Well, I was talking about this is a bad idea as it pertains to the mid-card guys. Uh, the, and the report also goes on to say that the pay-per-views will be almost exclusively championship matches. And that likely means an increase in multiple person matches. <laughs> so... Uh, like I said last week, where are these guys going to fit in at? As it turns out, they're not going to fit in at all. So, I mean, this is going to hurt the build. You look at the build for pay-per-views and I, I, the thing that makes pay-per-views are not just the championship match, but championship matches. But the things going on outside of the championships and we won't have a whole lot going on outside of the championship matches because we got all these titles and you're not going to have room unless you, you put another hour on an hour or two on the pay-per-view. So this is unfortunate. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but I, I really hope something breaks for for the talent that's not going to be up there near the titles or near the top of the card so let's get right on into this the elimination chamber picks and predictions let me get myself together here i'll be right with you this is going to be interesting on many levels because there's not a whole lot going on with this pay-per-view when you look at it uh, obviously, you got two Elimination Chamber matches. You don't want to have a whole lot on it. So, as it pertains, there's not a whole lot of matches here. But first off, we're going to start with Woken Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. This is another Oh No Baby, What Is You Doing? What is you doing, WWE? I mean, this feud has been such a disappointment what they're doing with Bray Wyatt is just is, look sometimes I wish Bray Wyatt would leave WWE but you know I'm not one to say what what a talent or knock a talent for staying wherever they are you know that's their decision just like I didn't knock Dolph Ziggler last week for signing that contract that's his decision maybe Bray Wyatt is comfortable there maybe he's happy there but as it pertains to creative they just continue to screw him over left and right. This view with Matt Hardy, yeah. speaking of being screwed over left and right, this Woken Matt thing is just dead in the water. I don't know what they can do to get it back. I mean, if you look at it, if they were going to do a final deletion match or whatever, this was the time to do it. And I mean, maybe you get some interest drummed up and maybe you do something else for WrestleMania to capitalize on that interest but apparently now we're just gonna have a run-of-the-mill match that's just gonna be there just to take up time and in the end I mean I mean I guess the, when all else fails go with the face in this and especially in this predicament where no what no one is really benefiting from the win or no one is really being hurt by the loss so I'm going to go with Mo Woken Matt Hardy. Look, I hope they do something dramatic with Matt Hardy. And I hope they go somewhere with this hidden WrestleMania. So next up, we have Asuka versus Nia Jax. And this feels quite like the placeholder match. 
I mean, it just feels like they got to the point to where we got to Elimination Chamber and they was just like, okay, Nia Jax and Nasuka is left over. And like, we don't know what to do with him. So let's put him in a match together. I don't quite like that. I mean, they tried to put a step on it to where if Nia Jax wins, she gets inserted into the Raw women's title match. And I mean, I guess, but I, at this point, what's the point in having her face off with Asuka when, look, Asuka's going to win, and that's that. If anything, they should have had Nia Jax. Look, if you go and surf uh, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins, just insert them into the Elimination Chamber. Why not insert Nia Jax into the Elimination Chamber? They should have just ins- found some kind of storylines where they fit her right into the Elimination Chamber, and that would have been that had that would have been that, and then you could have had Oscar sit at ringside to look over the competition and get some study the competition just in case she picks the raw winner. But here we are, and at the end of the day, as it pertains to prediction, not excuse me, Oscar is gonna win. I think they're gonna have a pretty good match if they give them time. That raw match with Oscar and Nia Jax just some few weeks back was pretty darn good, and I expect another pretty darn good match if they give it time. So moving on, we have this Ronda Rousey official raw contract signing to take place. This is a delicate situation, and I, 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 that's putting it nicely. You seen when Kurt Angle mentioned the Elimination Chamber and Ronda Rousey being there, there was more than a smattering of boos. Like I said last week, a very tepid reaction. And I know they've gone out to put out these training videos and you know Ronda Rousey looks good in the training videos and what have you, but there's a lot of a lot of mystery and a lot of things to be answered. How the fans are gonna take Ronda Rousey? I can't ride the Rousey even cut a promo because that is harder than it than it just looks. You can't just go out there and do it. Can she cut a promo? Can she wrestle a match? I think she, you know she'll be with her uh, martial arts background and UFC background. I think she can adjust to wrestling and make it look good and be carried to a good match. So I'm not as much worried there, but. Looking at her storyline heading into WrestleMania, I think that's going to take off here. Uh, and that's going to set up a tag team match. To which I, t- I said, when I was talking about Ronda Rousey, I think this was the night after the Rumble. On one of my podcasts, I said that WWE is painting themselves into a corner. It would, For me, personally, I thought they had to put Ronda Rousey in a title match because you don't just interrupt the two champs and the Royal Rumble winner and then say, oh, we're going to throw it into a tag team match. Well, guess what? I'm here with that now, and I think they're going to throw it into a tag team match. That was a waste of a moment, if you ask me. So I think that's going to get kicked off. I have my prediction on what it is, but... Not just yet. I'm not going to give it away just yet on what the WrestleMania match is. Just yet. I'm going to sit back and wait. I'll watch out, but I'll give that away soon. So, moving on. We have the Men's Elimination Chamber. Well, excuse me. We have the Women's Elimination Chamber match. And I got to say, I've really enjoyed the build to this, to this Elimination Chamber match. In fact, I enjoyed the women, truth be told, I enjoyed the women's Elimination Chamber build more than the men's, except for this last week. Heading into this last week, I enjoyed it, and then this last week happened, I was like, ah, uh, okay, the men got out in front, as for as the build went. Because that uh, gauntlet match was amazing, and they gave the women some random three-woman tag match that, uh, Another another three woman tag match. They have been getting away with that because the build had been going really well. They gave away a lot of first time WWE 
a dream build to which I didn't like. You know, we had Sasha going off against Oscar and Bailey against Oscar. Those matches were incredible. Nia Jax against Oscar, incredible. And why you give up first time matches? I don't like it. It did start a fantastic build to the Elimination Chamber. And it's all on the one premise, and that is that everyone wants to break Asuka's streak. Now, I'm one to think that if I'm going to be critical in any way, I think that the WWE Women's title should be above wanting to break Asuka's streak. I think the title should be the thing that's being placed as as most important but it is what it is uh as for the result of this match i really don't think that alexa bliss can win here or should win here because they've put alexa bliss on ice she hasn't defended the title in months and they've had her in this nonsense storyline with mickey james and look it's just time to get the title off of her uh, maybe have her do something pretty decent at WrestleMania, build her back up, and then get, get get her around the title once that happens. As for the result, this is pretty fishy. Well, pretty tough, shall I say, because my prediction hinges on whether Asuka goes to SmackDown or, or Raw. Now... You know what? I'm not going to punk out and make a if this happens prediction like I did for the Royal Rumble. Or if that happens, this is what's going to happen. Look, I'm going to say this. Oscar's going to go to SmackDown and challenge Charlotte. Therefore, in this match, I think... It's down, and it's down if Alexa Bliss is not... I'm not picking her. It's down to two people. I think it's Sasha or... Um, Goodness. Bailey, Bailey, Sasha or Bailey. I think Sasha Banks wins this match. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm back and forth on that one. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna go with it. Sasha Banks wins this match, and at WrestleMania. We are going to get Sasha and Bailey for the Women's World Championship. I don't know if they're calling it the World Championship, but the Women's title. And I think we're finally going to get that Sasha Banks heel turn. We're going to get an excellent storyline. Now, I was hoping for this last year. I thought they should have did it last year. But Sasha, Bailey, one-on-one for the Women's title. Now, moving on... We have the men's elimination chamber match. Winner goes on to face Brock Lesnar. At WrestleMania, we have John Cena, Roman Reigns, The Miz, Braun Strowman, I Elias, and thrown into the match, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. So this is quite the interesting thing. Like, I think that too much of something sometimes can be less, and I certainly find that to be the case here where you got seven guys i like that's too much in my opinion but since we got seven guys look i think the thing should be that balor and rollins should share a a, a, a pod don't know don't bring an extra pod out there have rollins and balor just sharing one until they get upset with each other and then just start beating the heck out of each other in the pod until they get one of them gets called out that would be fantastic also in this match I want to see Elias playing the guitar in this match and singing. Like, have Elias, when whoever starts the match, you got to have Elias calling the action while he's singing, like a, like a hip toss. You got to have a, a Elias singing that while the match is going on until he gets called out. That would be phenomenal. But looking at this match, it's going to be brutal and... Looking back, that's one thing I'm scared about with the Women's Elimination Chamber match. This is a brutal match, and like I have my worries about the women taking those bumps on this brutal match, and we'll see how it turns out. 
I hope it goes well, but I'm 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 cautious about that one. Cautiously optimistic, hoping that it goes well. But as for this, that's as for the men's match. This is gonna be brutal. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be an excellent match. Now as for the result, I think there's only two possible ways that this can go down. It's down to Braun Strowman, it's down to Roman Reigns. And at this point, I'm going to think that WWE has to put the title on Braun Strowman. But I'm not back in the offices making the decisions, obviously. So I have two. I'm wearing two predictions on this match as well, just like I was for the women's match. Either Braun Strowman and Roman both win in a sort of, sort of uh, the official. Both of them had their hands on each other and the official counted both of them down so they both win and they both go on to WrestleMania match. That would be perfect. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think in the end, WWE is just bent on this Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar match. Like I said months ago, forget it. They can have it. I'm not mad at it. So in the end, I think Roman Reigns will win this match. It will be Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. I'm not sure what Braun Strowman is going to do. Should be at least a three-way in Russell, at WrestleMania. But it won't. Roman will win. Won't Roman will reign supreme. And we will get Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. So that's it for the Elimination Chamber Picks and Predictions Podcast. I will be watching it. Check it out with me. I will be live tuning it as well at OMG Corey B and at 2 Sweet Pod, the number 2 Sweet Pod. You can also find me at Podomatic and on YouTube. I am out and I will see you Sunday.